Hello everyone, my name is Aditi Kabra and I will be talking about verified train controllers for the Federal Railroad Administration train kinematics model, which I will henceforth call the FRA model. This is joint work with Stefan Misch and Andre Platzer, and we are affiliated with the Computer Science Department at Carnegie Mellon University. These are trains. They transport people and freight efficiently. We like them. It is important that they stop where they're supposed to, following these signals. Otherwise, they can collide and derail, causing loss of life and property. Here's the statement of the problem. The train needs to stop by this point E, the end of movement authority. You might think this is a straightforward problem to solve. The track is one dimensional, there's a fixed end point. How hard could it be? But turns out it's difficult because train motion is complicated. Several forces interact subtly. For example, suppose the train is traveling uphill. Gravity acts on it to decrease acceleration. Decreased acceleration results in a slower train with decreased resistance, since resistance is dependent on velocity. Decreased resistance, however, means acceleration has increased, which makes slope change faster. And this is all while air brakes are gradually ramping up in a time-dependent fashion as pressure leaks from brake pipes until saturation. Air brakes are a braking mechanism present on most freight trains, they're really important to take into account because they provide a strong force that takes a long time, around 20 seconds, to reach full effect. Other effects that drastically affect train motion, track slope and track curvature, aren't even known at the time of designing the controller. Given how complicated the system is, it is very difficult to design a controller that you are sure is safe. Controller validation using approaches like simulation and testing have the drawback that they check only a finite set of points out of uncountably infinite possibilities. We use the complementary approach of formal verification. A model of the train controller and dynamics is represented in mathematical logic. We then write a mathematical proof that the controller is always safe using computerized theorem prover Chimera X. One verification at once covers all of the infinitely many possible cases. Performing the proof in a computerized theorem proven makes it repeatable and reliable. This is the first work that accounts for all of the effects in the FRA model. In the process of finally overcoming all the challenges to create a realistic verified controller, we contribute generalizable techniques to verified embedded system design. This slide compares a numerical integration-based controller from the literature to the formally verified model in the present work. Because train dynamics is so intricate, the numerical integration-based controller conservatively stops over 2,000 feet short of the end of movement authority. This is not very efficient. Suppose you are trying to offload goods onto a platform. This train has stopped hundreds of meters away. In contrast, our verified controller, by reasoning carefully over 188,000 proof steps, was able to reduce this gap to 502 feet. I will now talk about some of the techniques that we used in the paper. But before that, let me quickly introduce you to the train dynamics. Train position P changes as velocity V. Train velocity V changes as acceleration, which has several components. There's A sub L, which is locomotive traction. A sub A is the deceleration because of the air brakes. A sub S is the acceleration under gravity due to the slope of the track. A sub R is rolling resistance, also called Davis resistance. The train experiences more of this deceleration the faster it rolls down the track because of a linear and quadratic dependence on velocity. A sub C is the extra resistance a train experiences as it is going along a curve in the track. Finally, air pressure braking effect 
ramps up at rate m sub v as pressure propagates down pipes through the length of the train until it reaches a maximum, a sub v max. Now I'll talk about how we dealt with the effects that were unknown at proof time, the exact slope and curvature of the track. When designing the controller, we need to predict a provable upper bound on position P after one control cycle. In order to derive this bound, we will require a bound on velocity. In order to bound velocity, we need to deal with these unknown functions, the effect of slope and of curve. Fortunately, we know the worst case bounds on slope and curve. A given railroad will know its steepest slope and sharpest bend. So we conservatively substitute in the worst case values to compute a bound on the dynamics. We use other information about the track to get even better worst case bounds to substitute in. For example, because slope changes only gradually, use the maximum rate of change of slope to get a bound on its effect. Over here, you can see that I have the naive bound on worst case slope effect, M sub S, but also a more sophisticated bound from knowledge of the rate of change of slope. I will now highlight some of the other generalizable design and proof techniques we used in the paper. The first is a method to resolve circular dependencies. While designing the controller, we need to predict provable bounds on the variables of motion, but often these variables depend on each other. For example, in order to predict how large velocity will get, I would like to know the slope of the track to know how gravity will affect velocity. But in order to know the slope of the track, I would like to know how large velocity will get to know how quickly my current slope could change. The solution is to bootstrap with a naive conservative value and iteratively derive improved estimates. This controller design technique produces its own proof. Each iteration corresponds to a fixed number of proof steps. The second method is to use the Taylor polynomial approximation. Polynomial arithmetic is decidable so Taylor polynomials can prove a useful approximation of complicated solutions. Finally, sometimes intermediate steps of reasoning, such as those that turn up in the case of circular dependencies, are themselves transcendental expressions. At these times, we can represent them as extra host differential equations running alongside the real system and compare the original system to them. We evaluate our controller against a baseline from the literature by simulation. Here, I present one of the train configurations from the literature that we simulated. The x-axis denotes train position and feet, while the y-axis has three rows. The first denotes velocity. The second shows acceleration, revealing when the train is braking, and the third denotes elevation. This train is going through a trough. On the left, you see that the baseline undershoots the end of movement authority by over 2,000 feet. On the right, the verified controller limits undershoot to 502 feet. The reason the baseline controller is so conservative is that in order to compensate for the inaccuracies of numerical integration, it adds a fudge factor, a safety offset. Suppose we were to remove the safety offset, then the baseline controller becomes unsafe. The red highlighted region indicates where the train has a non-zero velocity, even past the end of movement authority. Our formerly verified controller has eliminated the need for an offset and as a consequence is more efficient than the baseline. In summary, our work contributes a verified train controller that accounts for the full realistic FRA model. This is the first time a verified controller has accounted for all the interacting forces of track slope, curve, air brake propagation, and Davis resistance. We used several generalizable proof techniques and evaluation shows that our controller is safe while being more efficient than previous work. This project was funded by the FRA. Our proofs are available online. Thank you.